actually don't 100% remember what my, my line was. For the base! For the Baron! And the base! I'm so sorry, how can I forget? He's got him, he has... Listen, you hear me, he's got! I'm like, let me in! And of course, fear stands. I'm like, shut up, shut up! And I'm like, Deficio, shut up! Deficio, shut up! But he doesn't shut up, Deficio never shut up. Fuck sakes, Martin! Right, the first clip that we have comes in from Carrot, Carrot L Day, Karatel Day. Um, either Athens 29 or the We Are in Sweden moment. I know for a fact that We're in Sweden is going to come a little bit later. So I will get to that when, <laughs> when we do. Um, the first one for the Athens opening ceremony. This, this was fun for me. This was really fun for me. 12 weeks in the making. Eight Since of the reverb in the studio. Discarded. Two challenges survive. One, your champion. So immediately, just straight out the gate, by the way, this first bit of the recording is actually um, uh, pre-recorded. We actually filmed this earlier in the day, so it's still like on day. I did it live to camera, but Today, the players are standing next to me, and I filmed this bef before More tech checks and before they get to stage. So. I give you a little moment now. The world is watching, and we oh, are this is so exciting. We are EU. Athens, your history was forged in battle. Athens, you are the birth. Whenever we did these, whenever we do these, um, whenever we do these opening ceremonies, I was very fortunate. I was very lucky that a lot of the experience, and like by this point, by 2019. I've done a bunch of them and a bunch of like studio shows. So the producers that were working with us, a lot of people would meme on Kevin Bell. He was the, the villain, the evil producer. Um, we had a good rapport and a, and a good relationship where we basically trusted one another. He, he would say to me, I want to do these camera cuts. I would say to him, I want to do this kind of like type of script. And we'd work together to put these types of events together. Athens, this is your moment. And I still feel so cool with those camera cuts. Like it's cheesy. That's a little cut now, right? So we jump back to live and always, whenever we go to a local place, I always try to put in just a tiny bit of the local language, a tiny bit of the local flair. And I still remember this, Kali Spera Atina. Like it's still burned into my brain. Um, the steady cam operator that was working with us, he uh, told me to do this twirl. Kali Spera he made me do it. Brings me so much joy. The whole thing with that camera cut and the music plays well is literally to buy time for me to get up onto stage. Uh, and there's a moment coming up here where I point at the trophy. Today's final features I the best teams in Europe. I wasn't allowed to do this. I was told it was lame. I was told I shouldn't do it. And only one will be victorious. Etched onto this trophy is G2 Esports. And There's quite a few moments in my opening ceremony careers where me and the camera guy, we decided that when we're alive, um, when we're live, they can't turn us off. So if my producer during rehearsal says, I don't love this idea, me and my camera guy would just be like, no, we need to do it. This is going to be fun. We, we do it because we, we, we think it's, it's awesome. And today, the Fnatic are going to stop them. Athens, shall we meet your combatants?
God, I love this so much. I love this so much, you know. Um, I'm probably not going to play through the whole the whole player intros because it's going to be a really, really long video. And I'm going to focus just on the stuff that I that I want to do, you know. But, um, man, this was also a great moment. Like, when we're building these things, right, um, when we... When we look at how we want to do opening ceremonies, I, I will get this pitch in a story meeting where one of the producers goes, if you want to run up the stairs into the middle of the stadium, like, I don't think you, you see me doing it, but the whole time I'm, I'm reading these player names. Uh, while I'm reading the player names and like the camera's going up the stairs, I'm legitimately moving up the stairs to get to this platform where we do a coach's interview. Oh man, it's so cool. It's so cool. I had a lot of fun with that one. I had a lot of fun with that one. So this one comes from, you can just call me Daniel. So thank you, Daniel. Um, San Francisco going crazy. Brazil's biggest win internationally and a moment that we still hold very dear to this day. Passion was felt by us and we appreciate the support that you gave our region um, through the years. Thank you for everything. So this is probably gonna be a full game VOD. Oh man, Does, did anybody watch this? I mean, think about that, dude. 2016, right? 2016, INTZ taking down EDG. First game in the groups. And I'm willing to say this is a bigger upset than Kaboom. Thank you, Jat. I agree. Yeah. Bigger upset than Kaboom. Agreed. This was wild. I take uh, a lot of pride in kind of connecting with local audiences and, and going a little bit out of my way. I remember when um, we were back in the studio for I think 2019 or 2020 maybe. No, it's 2020 20 or 21. Um, Goku was playing for for the CBL representative. So I had like Goku socks, gave a big shout out to the player. Um, big fan of Revolta, chats in for a long time. BRTT, you know, went out of my way for them. Um, and it, it, it makes me happy when I read a fan saying that they enjoyed the fact that um, I, I gave them a shout out. You know, I, I gave, I did, the local fans proud for such a huge, such a huge win, you know? Dude, Albus Knox Loon taking down rocks was good. I think another idea I have for a video that I want to put together for YouTube would also be like ranking the biggest upsets or ranking the biggest wins or like doing a little bit of a tier list on that sort of thing because I think that could be fun. Okay, right, let's move on. Next one we've got from Tejas. G2 versus SKT MSI 2019 game five. I started following League of Legends mid 2019 and this was the first tournament i was watching my god your first tournament and you have g2 over skt the series was impeccable um and it made me follow lec for casting thank you tejas um so the clip that he wants us to or she they they want us to look at is at 35 minutes oh Sets another up. They trade it. Top for jungle. Clear is down. Yankus goes up, but he can't take down Faker. So far, it's a two for two. Wonders running for his life. He can't find the stun. Two for three at the end of the fight in favor of SKT. Time here. Okay. coming out on top of these fights. One Dude, look at this. Two to two, right? Game five. G2 are up 5k, and this is when uh, Claps was absolutely dominating. Dominating. I think he comes in and he cleans the up. Shutdown goal. Six. One and five. The gold lead truly doesn't mean a thing. And SK Telecom, they might be able to burn Baron. All oh, the pings are on Baron, but they don't have a lot of health bars to do it. Faker's going to have to tank it Oh, up Papa Smithy. I miss you, brother. Seconds. This is not going to be an easy take. Marta denies the blast. One just pike in this go. game, dude. Nine, three, and one. Okay, so let's take a look. Maybe it's gameplay 3550. No, okay, wait, wait. Wait, let's go back to that. I just killed my own. There we go. Here's the moment. Here's the moment. Okay, let's look at the mini map. Look at the mini map, right? Teleports come in. Caps and perks in the middle. Huge stun from perks. Listen, it's at that moment. It's at that exact moment that you know G2's won, right? Um, I think when I think back to the series, um, I actually have. I have a lot of fond memories thinking back to um, specifically casting with Vedius because we were incredibly lucky that a lot of G2's wins, 
a lot of uh, G2's successes um, in knockouts and brackets and surprises. Vedius and I were lucky to be casting. But especially against SKT, there's always this chance that you, you they're going to come back. You, you always have this feeling SKT can come back, right? And in that previous fight, there was these moments where Faker gets some kills. Yes, they're still down 5, 6k, but it's not impossible. It's a strange comp. We just still didn't really know how, how do you fully trust. This Baron moment happens, and my gut is telling me they've just won. They've just won. But I'll tell you this right now. 30 minutes into game five, the kills that have just been secured by G2 and the fact that Baron's going over there, I know they've won it. And, donated a Baron from SKT. and if, if you watch this whole video, it's at this point now that I know they're winning, that I start looking at my notes and I start thinking about, okay, what's my win moment? What have I prepared? What have I written down? Um, what direction am I, am, am I taking this win moment? How do I need to adjust it based on what's happened, right? I actually don't 100% remember what my, my line was. For the base! For the Baron! And the base! I'm so sorry, how can I forget? Um, my god, okay, wait, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go back. Donated a Baron from SKT! That's a dunk from Wonder Death from below! For the double, for the ace, for the Baron and the base! G2 obliterate SKT! Look at all the death timers! They're looking- Oh, my hands are shaking. My hands are shaking. Uh, if I ever make merch, that has to be a merch thing, right? That has to be for the double, for the base, for the Baron. I mean, um, what I love is, well, listen to Vedius' smile. I'm being deadly serious. I'm being deadly serious. Listen to the smile in his words. You can literally hear the smile. Now, um, a little bit of like behind, behind the scenes. I've actually got a lot of just alliteration Quite naturally, quite normally, I think when I do cast, um, I'm not the wittiest. I'm not the most creative. Like I think um, Dracos has got huge flow. Medic is is very, very like um, verbose at times. Like Medic's vocabulary is fantastic, and he really does well at implementing new words. I really struggled with that, but I think I've got the alliteration oh, that I did quite a lot. Oh, then this year. Now, this, this of course, uh, Big Pedia, uh, MSI 2019. I need to teach you guys things. I need to teach you guys some things here, right? Because there's two lines from this moment that are just insane, right? Um, when we look at when we look at the tournament bracket and the tournament structure, when we look back here earlier in the day for MSI, Team Liquid had just taken down IG. Then G2 beat SKT and then G2 go on to take down TL for the fastest 3-0 in international scale. I still believe this is the, the fastest 3-0, right? Now, I mentioned about win moments and um, that alliteration I had just before the Nexus goes down was off the cuff, kind of reactionary. That's just something I did normally. I had written down this, this win moment and I specifically, I wanted to choose words that um, celebrated the fact that North America had taken down the LPL, you know, China, the uh, NALCS and LPL. Then we got LEC taking down LCK. But I didn't want to say team names. I didn't want to take away from G2 because G2 is the only names that you should be hearing in this win moment. So I needed to get different, different words to represent the different players, the different people the taking part here. Baron empowered minions are pushing into the base. The gap be damned. Champions can fall, gods can bleed. Where were you when the West rose up to conquer champions? At this point, of course, like the first time that we've seen this, like such a huge win for the LCS, like one of the greatest moments. I was in a studio um, uh, uh, late at night, like watching the American staff members, the American writers just jump around and celebrate. And I'm, I'm incredibly proud of this line and I'm incredibly proud of the the emotion and the story behind it do you know what i mean uh, and it's something that i i i spent a lot of time thinking about and a lot of time putting energy and effort into uh is is thinking about those Damn. things oh can, can fall gods, gods can bleed for you when, when the west, west rose up rose my god oh god it's such a great memory um thank you tejas that that whole series was was amazing um and definitely brings back uh 
brings brings back fond feelings. All right, next one comes from Mad. This is an Inax Aphelios 1v4. Inax is left alone and will be cut down eventually. Let's see how much damage you can put Oh, out. this is ridiculous. Yeah, this Was this the 2000 years era? Until yeah. Lands one Q and it's all over. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I remember this actually. If you listen to the tone of my voice, I'm convinced Inax is dead. I'm 100% convinced. Like, there's there's no way he survives this, right? Yeah, just wait till Hansama lands one Q and it's all over. Yeah, definitely, Hansama. Wait, wait! A lot of now, I didn't actually expect him to win this until Ender starts chiming in, until Ender's voice, like, picks up, and that's why I'm like, oh, I gotta, I've gotta react. But by this point, I'm behind the play, right? By, by this point as a caster, I, um, I, I actually had to... I actually had to readapt. I had to like pick up the pace, pick up the timing, and technically I didn't do the best job here. Damage is not done yet. I saw I wrote to death warrant, but he's still alive. Inex is looking I'm confused now and my brain's like, is he still gonna alive? He gets a double kill! The lifesteal! The death starts! What is happening? What? Inex is turning around to Hunt Summer! Here comes nukes! That is incredible! Inex, I was convinced you were done! <laughs> I actually, and it's so funny, you can actually hear, but when I'm like, I was convinced he was done, that's legitimately where, um, in, in my head, whenever I, I think about how to cast, whenever I think about the stuff I'm going to be saying and doing, if I've made a mistake that I'm uncomfortable with, and I want to recover, or if anyone picks up on it, I just tell people, you know? I stop oh, casting. yes, yes, just, just, yes, 200 years. yep, yep, fuck a Felios, fuck a Felios, that's all I'm saying. Right, okay, next one. Uh, Dudley, still your best head, you- Oh no! Also, every time I hear your name, it takes me back to 2016. Personally, the funniest and best year ever as a League Spectator, and I was a huge part of EULCS, MSI, Worlds, and any mostly silly and goofy as ever. I'm scared. No, I hate this moment. I hate this moment so much. Hold on! Oh. It's just us up in the to channel the dark side. I- you can see that in rehearsal, my- on. My it's hair needed to get <laughs> the dark. My hair had to get flattened <laughs> for the headphones. <gasps> uh, we tried to do it like a WWE thing, dudes. That was the goal here. There was no dark side channeling. There was just pure weaponized cringe. That's all this was. Um, I hated everything about this, and Ow. and um, this is a special moment because. Dash, Ibai, and me are not normally three people you'd see on stage at the same time, right? We normally do, we normally do things ourselves. We're normally the guys that do the stage hype individually. So, coming into All Star, um, this this was a moment where we wanted to get the three of us. And we're like, well, how do we do it? And we're like, let's go WWE. Let's try, it. dude. I it's so cringe. It's so bad. The other problem is Ibai is a legitimately good player, like really good, and we agreed beforehand to do like a a mirror match. Do you think I'm scared of a Maokai main? And I'm, again, I'm trying to piss off the Spanish Do you think crowd. I'm scared of a Diamond Four. I'm silver at this point, dude. Yes, Do you I'm shitting myself. Scared of someone who kisses Dash. <laughs> and also, it's a little bit funnier because I don't think at this time Ibai's English was the greatest. I don't think he actually understood what I was saying. Not in a in a bad way, just like it's, you know, One yeah. V Oh, dude, I'm cringing so much. I'm cringing so much. Yeah. The cast that's better at his rap battles is these skills, which is even more insulting because I've never been involved in a rap battle. I didn't get involved in those content pieces. God, this is, yeah. Okay, the screaming match back and forth, back and forth. Tough talk that I hope you can back up. So here's the deal. I want a very clean fight. Gentlemen, put also, listen to Dash's voice. You can hear he's been screaming Dasher, so much throughout the week. The and obviously there's a bit of delay here. I think the VOD, the VOD has been cut out. I will just quit forward. I actually didn't know if they would actually uh, pull it off. Plus, our boys. <laughs> okay, it's right. very- Let's get to the horrible gameplay. And again, Nasus we had agreed that we wanted to do the 1v1. We had one shot. 
Okay, oh dude, man. Skinny, you can't have no, gotta no, no. We're gonna move this. We're gonna move this. This is awful. This is awful. I get my ass kicked as I left. We were supposed to do Renekton versus Renekton. I tried to cheat, and then I just got insta gift. I got absolutely insta gift. Awful, awful, awful. Uh, so yeah, EULCS 2015 playoff reckless. Tristana's pentakill. God, I'm gonna die for this one again as well. And the reason this one's so this one's like how much damage can they? The reason this one's personally annoying to me is that couple hits down. Three I had a plan. Call already finished for Hooney. He does have summer finals. Playful tricks to chat. Where, where are we? On the front line of origin forces a defensive onslaught of shadows. So as rides the lantern out, and these I think you guys, I think you guys should know where we are, right? The tower alive. I'm opening the door for this. There goes Yellowstar, another taunt. Who's looking for Miffy? Wild growth will slow them down. Glitterlance connects as well. And Reckless plus that. Invita's got it. That's a double. He's looking for more. Listen to this. He's looking for four. That's a quadra. He will get it. The reset forward. Looking for a pentakill. We're in Sweden. The Swedish are now, now, I don't care that I said we're in Sweden. I don't, okay? Seriously, get off your high horse. It doesn't matter. Listen to how I get cut off by my co-casters. Forward, looking for a pentakill. We're in Sweden. The Swedish are getting I wanted to build up. I want. I didn't tell my co-casters. This isn't, this isn't um, their fault, right? I wanted to build up to a story because at this point, every pentakill we've ever seen is just a bunch of people yelling pentakill. So I wanted to do it different. I wanted to tell a story. I wanted to be like, and the Swedish AD carry in Sweden gets a pentakill in game three of the finals. In my head, it was going to be epic. In my head, it's going to be a big deal. Um, but unfortunately, I didn't tell my co-casters. So the excitement yeah, overcut them. He's looking for four. That's the quadra. He will get it. The reset forward. Looking for a pentakill. We're in Sweden. The Swedish AD carry gets a pentakill. Reckless is on fire today. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, ridiculous. Um, I still, I think back this, it's become such a meme. It's become such a meme. And when we went to, um, Malmo in 2021, no, 22, 2022, Jesus, 22, I think. Um, I stood on stage in Malmo and I, for the crowd warm up, this wasn't on broadcast. This wasn't on air. I had a moment where I told everyone, I'm going to say we're in Denmark just to piss off the Swedes. So if any Swedish people are watching, I was like, we're in the entire stadium went Sweden. And while they were saying that I went Denmark, they booed me so loud, but then I got their attention. I got their excitement. And when I actually did the opening ceremony for Malmo, I had their energy, you know, but yeah, this Can moment. Sweden. Fuck's sakes, that's gonna follow me forever. It's gonna follow me for absolute fucking ever. Jesus Christ. Next one comes from at support ins. Uh, this one resonated because of the time period it wasn't invested as much as a cost. Wait, which clip is this? Uh, oh, yes! Oh my god, we've hit all the classics already. Would. Da -da -da -da. I wasn't invested as much as the cast or casters on their personalities and normally watch 90% of the games with music on in the background. But for this one time, because of Udia, I chose Why Not? And the genuine joy in your voice casting this wacky as heck pick for the game, it made me appreciate what you guys do more and more. And after that, I started watching the games with the casters more and genuinely love it to this day. Um, thank you so much, uh, Subins. I'm going to let this play just by itself because this is, Olochachi with the this is one of the moments that I think... That I think really put me on the map, right? 2015. Well, two gangs system. now. He's got him. He has Phoenix stance and of course Fear stance, and he's already looking Flash bear slap! Flash bear slap! He's gonna do it. For it! Do it! He's going in! He's going in! Flash bear slap! Twenty-two <laughs> noise down. Rudy is on. The already looking Flash bear. Do you know my favorite part of this? My favorite part of this is when I'm yelling, "Do it! Do it! Do it!" Slap, flash bear slap, he's gonna do, go it. For it. do it, do it, he's going in, he's going in, flash bear slap, finding Pizzelli is down. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, this brings me so much happiness. Um, okay, inside baseball moment. If you're watching this stream, I am about to publicly reveal something I've never revealed before. I cheated for this clip. I cheated for this clip. How did I cheat? You might be asking. Okay. Well, listen, um, when we shout cast, right? We obviously have our PCs in front of us. Then 
the gameplay, the footage from the gameplay needs to get sent to a production room. Production room, they're going to add the overlay, the graphics, the audio. That then gets basically sent to stream. So there, there needs to be a small amount of delay to get all these things queued up because you want to add like the gameplay, you want to add the graphics, you want to add the microphones. So if you were logged into the client as I was for every single game that I've ever cast, you would get three to five, four to six seconds of heads up. So I would intentionally have my gameplay that would be like in a picture in picture about five seconds ahead of the play. This all I charge you with the so now listen to my voice for this one, right? I could see Kickers is going in the bush and I could see Kickers was waiting for the gank and my brain is just going, I've got four seconds. What's he going to do? And Deficio just won't shut up. I, my hand is doing this, right? Now, when my hand's doing this, I'm basically saying, let me in, let me in. I have something to say. I want to go. I want to go. I, I want to jump on the mic. Two two gank now. He's got him. He has listen. You hear, he's got. I'm like, let me in. Stance and of course, fear stance. And I'm like, and shut up, shut up. And I'm like, Deficio, shut up. Deficio, shut up. But he doesn't shut up. Deficio never shut up. Fuck sakes, Martin. Why were you never... Ugh! So I, I panicked. I can see him sitting. I can see him waiting. Now, again, bear in mind, four, four seconds. Flash bear slap. Flash bear slap. As I see it coming in, all I've got is like, I have enough time for three words. I'm going to cut Martin off. I'm like, shut up, Martin. I'm taking the mic. So I just, I have a few seconds. I'm panicking. And the only thing my brain could come up with was just pure, like unadulterated coaching passion. Big stance and of course, fair stance. And he's already looking Flash bear slap. Flash bear slap. He's going to go it. for it. Do it. He's going in. He's going in. Flash bear slap. <laughs> it's so much. One of the most things, and the thing that I love so much is that four to six seconds is not a lot of time. You can't really plan a lot. Um, You can sometimes do it. Like specifically, I was saying earlier in the video, for like win moments, when I think about my win moment, I prep them and I've written them down. Um, I do... I do like to have just that little buffer so I know I can type like I feel I feel it's my duty as a caster that when the nexus explodes that is when the peak of my win moment should come in and you know you use these things like hand signals and gameplay to align to make these magic moments happen so behind the scenes a lot of my caster friends and even to this day still have a little bit of a bittersweet feeling when they think about it because on one hand you could say I'm cheating a tiny bit but on the other hand it's my job to entertain it's my job to do a caster right so um, I, I have so much pride in this clip and I've never told this story publicly. I have never told anybody outside of the professionals at my side that I saw him wait, I saw him stop. And then I was like, panic, panic. And then I saw a flash and a bear. So I was like, that's all I got. So let me plan it, right? And I challenge you, if you think that's cheating, I challenge you to do that yourself, right? It, it, takes, it takes practice, it takes skill. I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of this clip.